Hang on. OK. If you cannot understand Chinese, please tell me now. Or if you cannot read Chinese while we watch a movie, if you cannot understand Chinese subtitles, please tell me now. This is especially important because our movie today is in French. So if you can't read Chinese, uh, please tell me. I have prepared English subtitles if you cannot read Chinese. OK. Uh, in the future, if uh, you cannot read Chinese, if you cannot understand a movie in English without subtitles and you cannot read Chinese, please tell me. OK, so uh, first I am recording this lecture and I will be recording lectures in the future. Uh, because when I record the lecture, I can upload it to YouTube. And if I upload it to YouTube, YouTube will add subtitles. And if it has subtitles, then you have a transcript. And if you have a transcript, you can search the transcript. Yeah, not, not that one. Yeah. So in other words, uh, if you want to review a lecture, but you don't want to listen to the whole thing, you can find the part of the lecture that you want to review. So that's why I'm recording uh, and uploading it to YouTube. And I will post the video links onto Moodle. OK, so uh, let's introduce the course. This is the syllabus. First week today, uh, I will be introducing the course. I will be talking about film. And then we will watch a movie, Day for Night. Day for Night is a classic 1973 French movie about making movies. Um, this is the oldest movie we will watch in this course. Uh, I tried to keep the movies uh, more contemporary uh, to help you understand what we're watching. The second oldest movie will be from 1996. And everything after that is from at least 2000. Uh, and this is also the only movie that is not in English. There will be one movie that is not in modern English. But they are all in English. And the, the reason this is not in English is because there are movies in English about making movies, but there is nothing like Day for Night. This is an extraordinary movie, and you will see the, uh, why later today. Now, uh, week two and week three will be a little different. Uh, to really give you a sense of what it, uh, happens in a movie, to help you see what really happens in a movie, we will be watching a movie very, very, very closely. It will be a two hour movie and we will spend six hours watching it. Uh, every time I notice something interesting that I want to uh, analyze for you, I will pause the movie and that's why it will take so long. Uh, and also, I'm not going to tell you what the movie is. It will be a surprise, um, but if you take a closer look at all of the other movies we will be watching this week, you may notice something that they have in common and that might help you guess what we will be watching next week. Um, all I can say is it will be a surprise, like a real surprise. You, you won't believe that we're going to watch this movie. Starting from week four, uh, we will return to the same format that we will be using today. Uh, we will begin, I will give you a lecture about that week's unit. We will take one break. And then uh, we will watch the movie. So it's a three hour course, but only one break. Depending on how long the movie is, the break might come early or it might come late. Or it might be 10 minutes, it might be 15 or 20 minutes, depending on how long the movie is. 
this week the movie is uh, two hours long, so we will take a break uh, 10 minutes before the bell. And please come back when the first bell rings. I'm not going to wait for you. We don't have a lot of time. OK, starting from week four, uh, week four, uh, we will be examining the aspect of filmmaking known as acting, makeup, wardrobe, everything that is related to the actor. Um, and to help us understand this, we will watch a movie called Clouds of Sils Maria. Week five, we will be talking about cinematography or the camera, lighting, uh, and camera direction. So everything related to the camera is week five. And to help us understand this, we will be watching uh, a thriller, Jing Song Ding, called Underwater. Right, so every week we will be examining one part of film and then one kind of film. So week four, Clouds of Sils Maria is a kind of movie known as world cinema. Uh, this term is kind of biased because uh, it was Americans who invented this term. So world cinema is basically any movie that's not from the US. But in this case, Clouds of Sils Maria takes place in uh, two or three or maybe even four different countries. So it really is an example of world cinema. Uh, week five, thriller. By the way, you should know, right? A thriller is not necessarily scary. A thriller just means it's exciting. Although this one is sometimes a little scary. Week six, we will talk about editing, jinjie, including editing of the image and editing of sound. How does the image and the sound come together in the final film? Uh, and the kind of film we will be watching has to do with a subculture, zi wenhua. Uh, so this kind of film is basically any kind of film that is not about the straight white person's world. Uh, and in this case, the movie High Flying Bird uh, is about African-American basketball players. Week seven, we will talk about the sound and the score. The score is just the background music. So this week is everything to do with your ears. And to help us understand this, we'll be watching a science fiction movie called Ad Astra. Week eight, I'm not quite sure why this is bigger than the other weeks, but week eight, we'll be talking about location and production design. Location is of course the setting. Where did they make the movie? Production design is everything else. So like the objects, the physical environment. If they have to build something, what does that look like? Uh, and to help us understand this, we will be watching a Western. Uh, although this is not one of those classic Westerns with cowboys and horses and, and robberies. Uh, this Western is more modern, contemporary. It takes place today. Uh, and it's only a Western because it's about people who live in the Western part of the US. Uh, and so this movie will be Certain Women. Certain Women is also an anthology movie, which means that it's actually uh, three short movies put together into one longer movie. Week nine, midterms, no class. Uh, instead, uh, you will be begin your midterm exam after class on week eight. I will assign you a short film and you will write an essay answering a question about that film. You will have one week to do this at home. It will be on Moodle. Um, the question is basically, how does this short film make you feel? And how does it do that? How does it make you feel? And then how does it achieve that effect? And your answer must uh, discuss some of the things that we will be talking about in the first half of the semester. I'll give you more details uh, on week eight. So week nine, no class. Week 10, the uh, element of filmmaking we'll be examining is effects. Uh, you, sometimes called special effects, sometimes called visual effects. 
So like everything that you can't do directly with a camera that you have to add later. Or you have to plan for before. Uh, and to help us understand this, we'll be watching a fantasy movie called Constantine. Uh, starting from week 11, uh, we have already finished. We will have already finished talking about the main elements of filmmaking, so we will begin talking about some of the major themes that we find in movies. So week 11, uh, the theme will be technology. How does a movie use the idea of technology in the story? So this is not about how they make the movie, but how do they use this theme in the movie? And to help us examine this, we'll be watching a horror movie called Personal Shopper. I say horror, but like uh, this movie is not. OK, it's kind of scary. It's kind of scary sometimes. Uh, but a lot of the movie is not ex really that scary. The idea of horror, we'll talk about this that week, but the idea of horror is not to scare you. Uh, it's to repel you. It's to make you think this is not something you want to happen. Week 12, we will be examining the theme of desire in movies. How does a movie use desire? And we will. this will also be related to the audience's reaction to the movie. And to help us examine desire in the movie, we will be watching a noir, a film noir called Bound. Uh, film noir is French in Chinese is translated as Hei Se Ding. Uh, think of like detective movies or like conspiracy movies, that kind of thing. Week 13, we will be examining how a movie uses symbolism. Xiangzhen. And to help us with that, we will be watching a period piece, uh, Li Si Ju, called The Witch. Um, this is actually the scariest movie we will see this week, uh, this semester. And it's also a movie that is not in modern English. Uh, so on that day, I will give you Chinese subtitles and the English subtitles to help you feel uh, the language that it's using. Week 14, we will be uh, examining realism in movies. And uh, by this, I mean especially how does a documentary, how, do, how does it tell you that it's a documentary? If you don't know anything about the movie and you start watching from the middle, how can you tell that it's a documentary? How does it create the feeling of realism? And the documentary we will be watching is Citizen Four. Week 15 is the opposite. When you're watching something that is obviously not real. In this case, animation, Donghua. How much reality can it not use like how much reality can it throw away and you will still want to watch you will still believe this movie the question of irrealism or unreality uh, and the animation we'll be watching is the emperor's new groove now uh, week 16 is your chance to shine this week we will be watching a movie that you guys have proposed and have voted on. Uh, I'll, uh, like sometime later in the semester, I will open up a, a poll to let you nominate and vote on movies. And we will watch any movie you choose that is uh, less than 140 minutes. That does not, that is not pornography. Sorry, guys. Uh, and is either in Chinese or English. Uh, unless we later have a foreign student who doesn't understand Chinese join our class, in which case it must be either in uh, English or in the language of that student. So you will notice that I have not chosen movies like Marvel movies. I have not chosen Mission Impossible. Like some, the most popular movies that you can find on your own, I have not chosen. But if you want to, you can vote for that kind of movie. And hopefully after this semester of classes, uh, you will be able to see and watch this movie in a new way, and it, you will have new understanding uh, of these kinds of movies. 
Like also, like if you want to choose a horror movie, please don't choose something that's too disgusting. Like uh, the human centipede, right? Don't don't choose that kind of movie. Okay, uh, and then week 17, um, we will watch your group projects. I'll explain this later, but uh, you will have to form groups to make a short movie. Short means under 10 minutes. And on week 17, we will watch them and uh, you will give a score on your own group members and other groups movies. And I will give a score on everybody's movies. Uh, so that's week 17. Week 18, final exam, no class. That's the schedule. Do you have questions? So as you can see, we're watching something like 14, 15 movies, uh, which means each week we actually don't have a lot of class time. Most of it is just watching movies. That's why you're here, right? Okay, and then uh, the grades. Midterm, 40%. Final project, 40%. Participation, 20%. Um, yeah. Questions? So, like, please remember to take the online midterm exam. I have had students tell me they forgot. Uh, and then they just lost 40 points. So please remember. Uh, and the movie I chose, you probably won't find any information online. But if you do find information online, please give me the source of the information, otherwise that is plagiarism, Taoshi. And if I find that you have plagiarized your answer without giving me a source, you also will not get any points on your exam. Okay, that's the schedule. Let's take a look at the Moodle page. This uh, page has everything you will need for this course. My email, um, don't use the email that you find when you click on my name in Moodle, right? If it takes you to the profile page and it says uh, my email on Moodle, that's not, that one doesn't work. If you want to send me an email, use this email address. My office, if you want to chat, please don't come. Uh, but if you do want to come, please email me first. Don't take me by surprise. Uh, the Microsoft Teams code, if like your friend wants to join the course later and can't wait for the school to add them for some reason. The syllabus, we just looked at that. Class emails, if I send you a class email, the record of the email will be here. So you can check previous class emails. Attendance, you can't see this, uh, but this is where I will uh, record your daily grade at the end of the semester. Now, in this course, I will try not to use too many fancy filmmaking words, but if you're interested in that kind of language and those specific techniques, uh, you can check out this PDF. Uh, this is taken from a book by Tim Grierson called This is How You Make a Movie. I only give you the table of contents because the table of contents, Mu Lu, has a lot of interesting language that you might find useful. Uh, if you're interested in the whole book, we our library has a copy. Another book in our library that you may find useful is the Television Production Handbook. Television Production Handbook. Making a TV show is not the same as making a movie, but there are many similarities. Uh, and since I could not find an easy like movie making book, except for like I guess this one. Uh, you may find the television one useful also. Next is a link to a OneDrive folder. In this folder, I will put uh, the movie that we have just seen in class. And I will change the movie before each class. So right now in this folder is Day for Night, the movie we're, we're going to see uh, in a few minutes. But uh, before class next week, it will change to. No, it won't change because next week is a surprise. But like uh, before week four, it will change to the movie from week four. 
and then before week five, it will change to the movie from week five. Uh, first of all, this is to like, I guess, try to prevent copyright problems. Although I guess it doesn't really work. Um, secondly, because my OneDrive is very small and I can't put all the movies there. So like if you miss a class, I encourage you to download the movie and watch it at home on your own. OK, now on Moodle, for every unit, I have posted a PDF. This PDF is an article or report or some kind of uh, written material that is related to the movie. It may not be related to the unit. So for example, the PDF for day for night may not be related to ma uh, making movies. The PDF for Clouds of Sils Maria may not be related to acting, but it's related to the movie. Uh, I have chosen what I think is the best writing on each movie. Best does not mean easiest to read. It does not mean shortest. In fact, one of these is 30 pages long. Uh, and they're all in English. Uh, so, but the good news is you don't have to read these if you don't want to. These are here if you want to learn more about each movie, because again, we don't have a lot of time in the classroom. Uh, and you can't see week two because again, it's a surprise and I don't want to ruin the surprise. Uh, by the way, if uh, you have classmates who join uh, after next class, so after we have already watched the first half of the surprise movie and someone joins the class and they ask you, hey, what's the surprise movie? Don't tell them. I want to keep it a surprise for those people too. All right, so these are the PDFs for each movie and also the name of the unit in case you forget. Midterm exam is here. These are the details. I will explain this in week eight. More PDFs, one for each movie. OK. And then the final project. Uh, when designing the final project, I wanted to try to do two things. One, uh, I wanted to uh, give you the freedom to pursue whatever idea you might have and to work with people that you want to work with. So I'm at, the, at least at the beginning, I'm not going to divide you into groups. You can choose your own groups. But the second thing I wanted to do is I wanted to make sure that even students who have who don't know anyone in this room can still join a group and they won't feel awkward because you know I don't know anybody. So here's how you do this. Uh, if you have an idea for a short movie under 10 minutes, go here to the list of projects and write a proposal. Describe your idea. Actually, I'll let I'll let you see this right now. Right, so describe your idea, list your name, uh, and then list the kind of people that you need. How many people you need for your project? This is just an example. Uh, and so anyone who is interested in joining your proposal can then reply to your post and uh, ask for one of these jobs. And you can meet with your classmate to discuss whether or not uh, they can join your project. Right, so here, if you don't have an idea but you want to join a project, this is how you do that. Now, uh, I know that not everyone will end up in a project like this. So. If by week 10 you still uh, do not have a group, I will put you in a group. Uh, on, and the same goes for the reverse. If you have proposed a movie and by week 10 you still need more people, I will send people to you. OK, but if you can uh, realize your proposal, if you can complete your proposal and fill up all of the positions, before week 10, that means you have more time to make the movie. 10 minutes might sound like it's a very short time. But think about any movie you have seen. And think about how long each scene might take. 
uh, or think about it this way. Uh, in, ho in a major Hollywood movie, the average length of time for each shot, each image, is under three seconds. So 10 minutes is a long time. You don't have to do 10 minutes. Under 10 minutes is fine. The short movie you will be writing about for your midterm exam is only two minutes. Uh, and yet I still feel like there's enough material in those two minutes for you to write an essay. Uh, and I know that not everyone will be jumping at the chance to propose a movie idea. So I have added a slight incentive. Yo Ying. If you propose a movie. And by the end of the semester, you are able to finish making the movie. The person or people who proposed that movie. Will pass the course, no questions asked. Uh, unless you miss six weeks of class, because I can't control that. But as long as you come, uh, you miss no more than five weeks of class, you propose a movie, it gets made. Uh, even if you skip everything else, I will give you a passing grade. Uh, and you can propose with someone else. The name on the proposal can be more than one person. OK, do you have questions about the project? Right, so if all of you happen to be very shy and there are no proposals by week 10, I will have to divide everyone into random groups and each group will have to come up with an idea. Uh, that doesn't sound very uh, appealing to me. So like if you do have an idea, I highly encourage you to uh, write up a proposal and uh, try to find classmates to help you make the movie. OK, uh, and I will also add the like what movie will we watch on week 16 poll? I will add it um, here in the first section. OK, so that's Moodle. Do you have questions about the course website? OK, so um, that's the introduction to the course. Now let's talk about movies. Movies, why are they called movies? Um, the original name is a motion picture. Uh, this is still, you can still see this in Japanese, right? They call this inghua. Um, later it became moving pictures, and therefore that's where we get the name movies. Another name for movies is cinema. Cinema comes from the ancient Greek, which means movement, kinesis. So it's the same meaning, moving pictures. Um, the other popular name for movies is film. Film means uh, because before digital technology, movies uh, used cameras to capture light to put on film. Uh, so the word film also became uh, a word to mean all of movies. When we watch a movie, uh, most of us just pay attention to like the characters and the story. Uh, maybe the music, that's about it. But there are so many things that we can pay attention to. In a movie, everything you see and hear is the result of a decision. Somebody decided to do this, or they decided that it's fine not to change this. Uh, so not just what people say and what people do, but everything you see and hear is open to analysis. It's something you can think about in terms of what is this movie doing? How is it doing it? So from the more obvious one is obviously, for example, first is the actor. What kind of person did they get to play this character? Why this person? What do they look like? What does their face look like? What does their body look like? How did they style the hair? How did they style the clothing? Everything is a choice. Everything is a decision. How does the actor say their lines? A movie has a script. It has words, but the same words can be uh, performed in many different ways. 
why does the actor do it in this way and not that way? How loud are they? Are they using some kind of accent? Are they uh, what are they doing with their bodies? Does it help them communicate? Does their body language tell us something about how they feel about the other people or about the situation? Um, and then you have uh, everything aside from the actor. Where are they? What kind of place is it? Is it somewhere they found or did they build this place? Or did they draw it afterwards on a computer? Uh, what objects are is the actor uh, are the is the actor like uh, playing with interacting with? What do they pick up? What do they use? What do they not use but is there in the picture anyway? What's in the background? What color are these things? How do they make you feel? Does the, is this space warm, welcoming, or is it cold and rejecting, or is it nothing? Why? What kind of light? Are they using? Is it natural light? Is it light that was set up by the the cinematographer, Sun Yingsi? What? Where does the light come from? Front, back, left, right, up, down, everywhere. No light. Candle light. Uh, what color is the light? Is it steady? Does it change? Why? What does each kind of light tell you about the atmosphere and the emotion? And speaking of color, we can then talk about the entire image. What color is the movie? Is it like regular color? Is the general color bright? Or is it like uh, we call this desaturated, which means the color has been taken away from the image? Or is it more blue? Is it more green? Is it more yellow? Again, why? And that is only the static image, the image that does not move. When the image moves, how does the camera move? Is the camera in one place going up, down, left, right? Or is the entire camera moving? Does it go forward and back? And if it does, is the camera going forward? Or is it simply the, uh, the, the image is zooming in? And why? What is the difference? How does each one make you feel in a different way? When we look at a person or an object in the movie, what angle are we using? Is it from a low angle? Is it a high angle? Is it straightforward? Uh, when a character is talking to another character, uh, how are they? What direction are they looking in relations to the camera? In other words, where is the camera? Is it outside the room, inside the room? Is it next to a person? Is it on top of a person? Is the actor looking into the camera? Why? Each one has a different effect. And when we change from one image to another, when we cut from one image to another, why? Why can't it just be a movement? Why do you have to jump? What information are we skipping in the middle? Is it important? Or uh, is, is it specifically to hide something that the movie does not want us to see? When we change from this scene to the next scene, when does this scene end? Why does it end there? Why doesn't it end earlier? Why doesn't it end later? The same for the next scene. Where is it? When is it? Why this place? Why this moment? Does it feel fast? Does it feel slow? Why? And those are the things that we see. What about the things that we hear? We talked about how an actor may say their lines, but the sound is not just language, right? You also have sound effects. When a character is walking across the room, how does it sound? When they're indoors or outdoors, is there background noise? Can you tell if it's natural noise? Or did they make the noise later? Um, when a character is saying something in a noisy environment, often that is recorded after the movie is finished. Can you tell the difference? And then finally, the music. Is there music? Why is there music here and not there? What is it trying to do? How does it make you feel? What kind of music is it? Is it lighthearted, joyful, loving, or is it staccato, 
a noisy, angry music. Why and what is the difference? All of these things, everything you see, everything you hear in a movie, you can think about because especially in a good movie, they're all supposed to help you experience the same final result, the entire movie. So this is uh, looking at movies from the end result, but how does a movie get made? What is the process like? Uh, movie making can be divided into three stages. The, the part where you actually pick up a camera and make the movie is called production. Everything before that is called pre-production and everything after that is called post-production. Very easy to remember. Uh, in pre-production, usually a movie will begin as either a script written on paper or an idea. And the person who wrote the script or has the idea uh, can choose to make the movie themselves as, and they can be their own director or they can try to sell their idea to someone who knows a director or has money to make a movie. Uh, so once uh, the project has a writer, script, director, and enough money, uh, then the, the uh, producer, the person representing the money, will help find people to work on the movie. Usually the actors are chosen by the director, but all the other people who work on a movie are usually either they have been with the same director for a long time or the studio or the producer will find people. What kind of people am I talking about? Uh, if you're shooting indoors and you need to build a location, who builds it? You need carpenters, you need woodworkers, you need metal workers. When you shoot the movie and you need lights, who puts up the lights? You need electricians and gaffers. Uh, when actors and uh, crew members work all day, who feeds them? You need cooks. Where do they live? You need location managers. Making a movie requires hundreds of people, usually. Uh, some very small movies. Uh, I think the smallest movie I've seen took only three people. Uh, but that one looks like a small movie, you can tell. Uh, so after the producer and director find everyone they need, then they can begin production. When you shoot a movie, usually you do not make the movie in order. You make it out of order. And the reason is simple, because usually in a movie you will have many scenes from throughout the movie that take place in the same place. Right, so like if in the movie, uh, one location is your uh, main character's house. Uh, that probably means that throughout the movie, the main character will come back to their house, right? First day, second day, third day. It costs much less if you shoot all of those scenes at the same time, and then you can move on to the next location and then the next location. So usually uh, movies are shot out of order. So when you see an actor, for example, if you know the uh, movie, The Theory of Everything, it's the movie of Stephen Hawking, right? The, he develops ALS, he becomes paralyzed, he needs a wheelchair. In that movie, the actor looks like with each scene, he is getting more and more paralyzed, but it was not shot in order. He had to keep those little tiny changes in his mind throughout the entire movie and make sure that the, the changes were in order, even though they were shooting out of order. And then after you have all of your images, all of your footage, then uh, the editor in post-production will help put these images together in the right order, cut off parts that they don't need. You will add in the sound that it, you did not get while making the movie. You will add in special effects. And then you will put together a marketing campaign to sell the movie. And that's how you make one of these things. Um, there are two main ways to sell a movie. One, you can finish the movie and sell it to a film festival. Film festivals are not just for ordinary people to watch movies. They are also a marketplace to sell movies. Uh, and so a studio may think, oh, we can make money from this. And they'll buy the movie and they will market it and sell it to 
everyone else. The second way is during pre-production, you already go and find a big studio and they will give you money to make the movie and they will sell it immediately after you finish. But that also means the big studio may influence what the movie looks like. So there's pros and cons to either one. Uh, OK, so do you have questions about the general idea of movies? Uh, again, each week we will go in depth into each of these elements that I just mentioned. OK, let's take a 10 minute break. Come back when the bell rings and I will not wait for you to begin the movie. <laughs> 